A lot of countries thought they'd have it over us. I've never felt so ill in my life. If England wanted a perfect scenario, this is I it. I to tell her, you better lift me in the World Cup final. I'm going to die like this. And in your life, have you ever seen anything like it? From the depths of despair to World Cup winners once more. The Women's World Cup is this Saturday. You know, our wahine are going to have a hard tournament. I think that we've had a rough run in. The thought of going in as underdogs was crazy. Oh, we're going to try and play hard. It's going to create some chaos between the track. And uh, we're going to go bloody fire. Obviously, coming off the back of that end of year tour, I believe, like a lot of countries, thought, you know, that they'd probably have it over us. And rightly so, because the score lines that they had just put on us. This English side that's come down is a very, very good side. They thumped us last year. Everyone knew that England were one, the tournament favourites, but also knew of their record winning streak. They have been unbeaten for 30 consecutive games. I had an interview with a news channel, and she said to me, what's it like being the underdogs? And I was so, I was just so mad, you know? I was, I was at home, and the Black Ferns have an amazing legacy and reputation. Yeah, very unusual to come in with this record that we had with these stars that we've had and be underdogs. But I think people have written them off. For us to be seen as the underdogs was just more fuel to the fire. Getting to the stadium for that opening match the, the excitement was real, the nerves were real. You know, it's the first um, standalone women's rugby game to pack out Eden Park Stadium. When the bus was going into the entrance, everybody was waiting for us and just screaming for us. That was the pinnacle of my career at that point. So understandably, I was very nervous, but excited. I guess it's always been a dream of ours to have like a home crowd. When we found out it was sold out, it was like, whoa, <laughs> emotional. <laughs> so I just welcome you into this room. Just an honor. It's funny, eh? Because when I was driving here, all I could, all I could think, like, words that come to my head was, let me introduce myself. Let me introduce the Black Ferns of 2022, you know? So just go out there and express yourself. Don't worry, man. Like, we got you, girls. I got to play alongside Linda Heaps. She was a player who had very high standards and very big shoulders, and that's how she did the talking on the field and she wanted us to reintroduce ourselves because for a lot of us, it was our first time ever playing in a World Cup. Number eight. Yay! I was really proud, eh? Like, first jersey preso for my first ever World Cup, and I knew I was going to be playing it in front of my family and friends. Like, it was crazy. Like, I think it's one thing to debut for your first World Cup, but then it's another to be able to do it in front of your home country. Number 15, Renee Holmes. Receiving my first Black Burns World Cup jersey was a feeling like no other. To be involved in a, a historical game match for women's rugby was pretty, pretty nerve-wracking. Number four, Jonah Nangwu. <laughs> and now captain number two, Kira Hayes, Max. <laughs> For 
for us as Black Ferns, we didn't actually get many opportunities to play. So every jersey that you're presented with, it's, it's so important. I don't think I ever could have imagined the roar that I heard as I walked through those tunnels and actually um, stood there for the anthem. I think we tried to prepare for it as best we could. We went through things like having a speaker at training so that we couldn't hear ourselves, but I don't think you could truly put yourself in those shoes until you've been there. actually quite a big, nerve-wracking kind of um, feeling. It was a feeling that I'd definitely never forget. I was super proud to start that first game, as well as having, like, my entire family in the crowd and with all the poise everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. New Zealand will host the Women's Rugby World Cup in 2021. It will be the first time the Women's World Cup has been in the Southern Hemisphere. Twelve teams are set to take part in the tournament, which is expected to generate millions and attract thousands. Bring on 2021! I was worried. I've had the opportunity, and as other girls have in the team, to play in countries like England and France, and they have a huge fan base. And I knew that every time I played for the Black Ferns in New Zealand, we've never been able to generate even like a third of the numbers that they can. And every time I tried to visualise myself at a World Cup, there was no one in the stands. I think for me, I didn't even think anyone would show up, and that's just being straight up. We've played in empty stadiums, or you can hear your whanau in the crowd. Uh, you know, it's just something that's never, ever been done before. And then for them to say that we were having a Home World Cup, I was like, no one's going to come and watch. Like, it's going to be so, you know, like, shame. I think the New Zealand public maybe didn't understand or, or know what the Black Ferns can produce. So. We were quite nervous, um, and I think that's just the expectation that we put on ourselves, and that's not, like, the weight of the nation. I think, for me, it was more the past players. Pretty much, if you talk to all of them, what they dreamed of was a home World Cup. Women have played rugby in New Zealand as long as men have. The modern game, though, that kind of kicked off in the 80s. In 91, we were one of the teams that was invited um, by a group of women that were organising the first ever World Cup. So they did it themselves. Fast forward to the first official sanctioned tournament, that was 1998. And that's what started that ridiculous winning record. 98 through to 2010, basically unbeaten. Winning all of the World Cups. So, you know, that's something that's really unique about that Black Ferns identity. 
it's a team of mana wahine. You know, when you come into this Black Ferns team, you know that there's been a lot of sacrifice there. Our trailblazers, they didn't get paid and all that, but they still were able to get around and influence the world on how women's rugby should be played and, and showed people that women can play. I think definitely being a part of the team has made me very aware of how much the black jersey actually means to not just us as players, but the caretakers before us and our country. They're the champions by 44 to 12. New Zealand know now the champions title is theirs. The woman who had captained New Zealand to all three World Cup victories. It's a big lineup for the Black Ferns. It needs to be tonight. The crowd near capacity. Arabella McKenzie to the roar of the Eden Park crowd. There was a bit of nerves there, to be fair, at the start. All of those, you know, late nights, those early mornings, the, the hard conversations, the, you know, running hard at each other at trainings that all started actually coming out within those couple of moments after that first whistle blew. Oh, McMenamin's put that one down early. I remember it going to the left and then I was coming in to run a tip line. Oh no, timing was a little bit out. Pass was a bit too unsympathetic, so uh, I knocked it on. And actually for me, like, people might have thought I was nervous, but it was just the wrong timing. Everything was a little bit off. Probably wasn't the best start because it put us on the back foot. Receiver and already you see that change of direction, how quick. And then they kind of just got their, their tails up, like they were just into us and they were just going width to width. And we kind of didn't know how to handle that in the beginning and we we're a bit shell-shocked. Hendricks, wide ball to Rita and Holmes. Teresa's powerful, she's fast, she's strong. Coxie for Tui, quick hands to man. But Avania Wong is going to streak in to grab a second for the Wallaroos. Ghosting across Piliate and the line here's Teresa again. Bien Teresa! For me personally, I think that was probably one of the roughest 40 minutes I've probably ever played. The defence is having to push across, straight in. We were not playing how we trained, especially defensively. I think that and the occasion probably got the better of us. 